starting off with um, density. Okay, so we had this worksheet here. We already talked about how you calculate the volume, length, times height, times width. It gives you the volume of the bar. That's pretty basic. Displacement of the sphere is how you come up with the volume. And then one final one, okay, you have to go through and calculate the densities of each one of the objects. Okay, calculating each, the densities of each one of the objects. And then imagine what that would look like on a graph. Okay, and we had that right here. Okay, the cube, the bar, the sphere, and the cylinder all pretty much equal, so thereby it would be a flat graph. Okay, uh, with regards to the density and specific heat, so here we have the, the, the th uh, four objects, okay, you have iron, you have uh, water, you have air, and you have granite, okay. Um, let's see here, with regards to uh, specific heat. Which one of these would heat up the fastest, the quickest? Okay, here's a question that we didn't really cover too much. Okay, we did go over it because we talked about uh, specific heat, but okay, so which one would heat up the fastest with the, uh, oh, given the same amount of energy? Okay, so if I look at the reference tables, I find that uh, iron has a really low specific heat, water has a high specific heat, and air and granite somewhere in between. So if I add the equal amounts of energy to e each one of these, the iron will heat up the fastest or the object with the lowest specific heat. The lowest specific heat will heat up the fastest, okay? Um, of these four, which one is going to demonstrate convection the easiest? Well, that's the one that's most fluid, so it will be either water or air. Water and air can demonstrate convection really easy, okay? Many of you saw the convection when I put the food coloring in when we were doing the, uh, the volcano lab, and you guys got to watch the, the, the food coloring sink in the water, okay? But fluids, well, either air or water, are the ones that are the best for convection, okay? Um, if given any one of these four, if you heat them, they're all, their volumes will get bigger, and their masses will stay the same. So that means all of their densities will go down. Which one will heat up, uh, which one will expand the most? Well, obviously the air will, because the air molecules are already loose, so they'll heat up uh, and expand and push up more rapidly. Okay? Again, we have our four objects here. Okay? Now, really quickly, let's go back and figure out what they would look like. Uh, and we did this in density of liquids. If it was a graph. Okay? So here's density, here's mass, and here's volume. Okay? If I divide 24 by 4, D will be the most dense because 24 divided by 4 is going to be a density of 6. So D will go up the most, okay? And 12 divided by 4 gives me 3, and A will go up the least. Mr. Perry, what are you, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. how am I plotting? Well, it's simply if density is mass versus volume, the, I should say, mass versus volume is density, that means basically it's the slope of the line. So the slope of D will be a slope of 6, and A will be a slope of, of 3, okay? Um, okay, so that's density, that's specific heat, okay? Scientific notation. If I told you that the Earth's uh, diameter was 12,756 kilometers, okay? Um, rounded up, that's approximately 13,000 kilometers, okay? So what would that be in scientific notation, okay? If I take a look at 13,000 in scientific notation, that would be 1.3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So times 10 to the 4th, okay? That's how we're doing scientific notation there, okay? You'll get, like I said, one question on that. There's your review for that. And now we're on to latitude and longitude. Okay, so we have latitude and longitude here. Again, uh, as a review, okay, what direction is it if I go from F to C? If I go from F to C, this would be north and east. Okay, even though you have west coordinates here and north coordinates, north is still up in WE, so it's west. Uh, you're going from nor uh, nor southwest to northeast. You're heading in a northeast direction. Um, we went over how latitude lines are drawn, okay? And I didn't do this, but if I had to draw it on a globe, 
here's the equator. Okay, latitude lines run parallel. Okay, and then longitude lines run like they're on a basketball. Okay. Um, if a person moved from uh, C to D, how, what would happen to Polaris? If I move from C to D, Polaris would get lower in the sky, or Polaris's elevation would decrease because this person's at 30, 40 and this person's at 30. Okay? Again, Polaris is directly related to a person's latitude or the angle of Polaris. So if I looked outside right now in the sky, I'd find Polaris to be 43 degrees north. Why? Because my latitude right here in Kalmeyer is approximately 43 degrees north. We're shade over. Yeah, let's do C to D here. We talked about this one in class. So D is at 20, C is at 100, and we have to figure out the distance between the two spots. So here is 2, and here's another 2. So it's 2 plus 2 would be 4. So 100 minus 20 divided by the distance of 4. Okay? So that comes out to be 80 over 4, and it'd be 20 feet per mile. I'm going to demonstrate one more gradient. Okay? So gradient from F or X to Y. Okay? X is 20, Y is 26, minus the distance. If this is 2, and I have another one, another one is 3, so 26 minus 20 equals 6 divided by 3 gives me 2 meter or 2 degrees per meter. Okay? This, these are the types of gradient equations you'll have to work out, okay? So if I had to so if I had to imagine the profile from x to y, okay? The profile from x to y in terms of temperature. Okay? Going from x to y, it's simply going to go up. Uh, if I had to imagine the profile from B to C, from B to C, this will be a little different, okay? B to C. I'm going to go up, okay, really quickly from B. I'm going to level out, and then I have to, because again, I'm going to go one, two, three, four lines way up, and then I'm going to go back over the 26 line, so I have to go down. So I, this one's going to go up and then down. So let's talk about another tricky one. How about F to A? Okay? In here, the value is going to be higher than, it could be like 23. So I'm graphing F to A. It's not going to be a flat line. Can't be. Because I'm not following the line. I'm actually going to be just above the line. Okay? So if I graphed the profile from F to A, it's actually going to look like that. Okay? Why is it going to look like that? Because I am going to go to a higher temperature between F and A if I directly go from F to A directly. Because this is an area of higher temperature here. The only way for me to have a flat line is if I follow the, the line of the isoline. So if I had to imagine what the profile looked like from Y to Z. Z's all the way at the top, okay? So it starts out and goes up and then down and then up higher and then down. Why? Because this one is at 530 and this one's at 620. So this is going to be a little bit lower and that one's going to be a little bit higher in terms of profile, okay? So make sure that the mountain on your right hand side is larger than the one on the left. Okay. With that being said, that's most of the multiple choice that we've gone over. This river flows to the southeast, and you should know how to figure out where rivers flow and stuff like that. I um, want to go over profiles. I'm going to do one more profile with you. A, dink, 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 dink. Think. So this is A is at 6, 
80, 700, 720, 720, 700, 7, or 680, this is 660, okay, doesn't touch the river, okay, this is how I'm going to do it this way, because my paper's not long enough. So we have another 660, and then we have 680, 700, 700, 680, and 660. So, now we need to plot this out on our profile sheet. Okay? So, I have A at 680, and then keeping this in line the whole time. Oops. And that's how I draw my profile. Okay? Remember, you'll, everybody will have a scrap sheet of paper. You carefully monitor. You slide up. That's the greatest way to make sure that your dots are accurate. Okay? You slide up and slide down. Okay? As I rotate around for the other hill, again, I slid up. And those dots will always make sure that they're, they're lined up. Okay? And that's how you're going to run through that tomorrow. And I think that's about it. Hopefully this was beneficial and hopefully you uh, might have uh, realized a couple things that you didn't before. And if you've got any questions, see you first thing tomorrow.